Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another limited edition Stamp Timber exclusive. Today it is with Colorado Craft Company, and this is the Catch a Star stamp set. And it's huge. <laughs> set itself is like six by six, something like that. And this main image, I was holding it in front of a piece of A2 cardstock, so four and a quarter by five and a half, just to give you an idea. So I made a five by seven card just to do this uh, little critter justice. So I have some five by seven cardstock in my Misty. And I lined up this little, this little mouse and his, his net. And I'm going to ink him up and stamp him a couple times with intense black ink because I'm going to do some Copic coloring. So I've inked it up, stamped it, inked it up, stamped it again. And without re-inking the stamp, I'm going to stamp it onto some of Simon's masking paper. And the only reason I don't re-ink the stamp is because one, there's enough ink on there, I can see what I'm doing. And two, um, there's less chance of me getting ink all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes with masking paper, when you stamp the full strength of ink, it, and I, you know, if you let it dry, it's fine, but, you know, I'll start cutting and then I get ink, on, you know, black ink on my hands, which transfers to the cardstock, you know how it is. So, like I mentioned in my, one of the earlier Stamp Temper videos, and I was talking about paper piecing, similar concept. When you are cutting out a mask, you want to cut technically right inside the lines if you can like right either cut right on the line or just slightly inside it this helps prevent that like halo around the image if you don't cut um if you cut like right you know up against it depending depends on the type of product you're using for masking too some papers are thicker than others i do know like this simon masking paper it is very um strong I guess is the word I want to use like you I've used many different like masking rolls and post-it tape and all that kind of stuff you know this stuff will hold quite well like even these little finicky pieces you know that are little little bits that are sticking out for his fingers and the edge of the net and you know all of that it doesn't move with all the ink blending I'm gonna do the mask doesn't move so I trimmed it all out once it's trimmed Got to place it over the image here. And when it comes to masking, whatever you've stamped and masked first is going to be the very front. So if you want things to appear behind your image, you stamp the main image first, mask it off, and then stamp whatever else you want around it. And that's what I'm doing here. So I've got my mask in place and then I lined up all the little stars in this set. So a couple of them are going to be behind this image after I remove all the masks. So lined up the stars and then same thing i'm going to ink these up a couple times with that intense black ink i'm going to stamp these onto the cardstock and then without inking it up again i'm going to also stamp these onto the masking paper and trim them out so a little bit finicky a little bit time consuming but i do save my masks and i'll show that um, when i remove them so got the star stamped and then stamp them onto the masking paper and then again, fussy cut them out with my detail scissors. Once these are all cut out, and I missed one, so I had to stamp it there in the corner. So once these are all cut out, I can then place these over top of the stars. Because with a large panel like this, I was like, I'm going to ink blend this whole panel. It's just easier to create the background this way. So masking everything off, it's just... It's one way to do it. You can always die cut everything, you know, placed on top. But one, I don't have the wafer dies for the stamp timber collabs. People have been saying things about that. The, just an FYI, a lot of these collabs are selling out unbelievably quickly, but especially the ones with the coordinating wafer dies. Those always go first. It's nuts. But I don't have them. I've been making do, fussy cutting, masking, all the fun things. It works. So I've got my images masked. For my ink blending, I'm using Simon's Positively Saturated Ink, and I'm using the Morning, Twilight, and Galaxy inks. And I'm starting with my lightest, which is the Morning, and using uh, my blending brush. Not worried about doing a perfect blend. I just want, you know, nice, a nice soft amount of color. And of course, I've super sped this up in editing, but even then, it didn't take too long. I also took some post-it tape to put on my fingers there just to keep me from getting fingerprints and whatnot all over this background because these inks do react with water. 
So it's similar idea to like the distress inks. So when you're doing full areas and there's no place to hold it, if you know what I mean, um, the post-it tape just prevents me from getting fingerprints everywhere because it happens all the time. <laughs> so I blended Twilight, my, my medium color all around, and then I added Galaxy. And then I actually pulled in a bit of black soot distress ink and very lightly blended that just around the edges. Like it just kind of deepens it a little bit because I'm going light. And I also blended it a little more on the bottom just to kind of give almost, you know, the idea of a little bit of ground there. So after I was done my blending, I am going to splatter the ever living daylights out of this. <laughs> so I'm going to use my perfect pearl powder. I'm going to put some on my palette with my little fan brush here, and then I'll add a bit of water to this. Once I've got the water on there, I can swirl this all up and mix this all together. Um, someone asked me on another on the video I did for Simon about this and if it rubs off. No, but one, I don't rub my hands all over my finished cards, but, and like Tim Holtz says, don't lick your artwork. And two, Perfect Pearl Powder does have a binder in it that's activated with the water, so it's not going anywhere. I don't bother with, and I, I've said this in other videos, I don't seal anything. You can get spray sealants and microglaze and all the different things. I've never bothered. Not once. It just, does, I've never had a problem and I just can't be bothered. <laughs> so anyway splattered that perfect pearl powder mixture so that's going to be nice and shimmery all over this background then i mixed up some white gouache and a bit of water and whatever's left of the perfect pearl powder on there and splattered that all over the background it kind of looks like a hot mess but it dries back nicely and then the magic when you remove the mass i'm trying to be very careful removing this mass you can just rip it off you know, if it doesn't phase you, but I'm trying not to tear it because I, when I do mat, when I do actually make masks, I keep them because, you know, it's like I spent all that time cutting these out. I would like to get more than one use out of them. So I just stick them to the stamp packaging. So then the next time I go to use it, I've already got masks and I've shown that in other videos. I did that with all the beautiful flower stamp set that I've done like a million videos on. I had made a mask for that set literally years ago. <laughs> And that one, oh, the finickiness. But I kept the mask and I, I've used it multiple times to the point where I've torn the mask. I've used it so many times, but same idea. It's like I take the time to do it, stick it to the stamp packaging, and it's it's good to go. I can get multiple, multiple uses out of them. So for the coloring, I kept it really simple. I used Copic markers and it took a little effort with this most, not because it was difficult, but because it is such a large image like I'm I'm covering a fair amount of surface area on this cardstock and this is also again this is Simon's 120 pound smooth white cardstock which I do genuinely like for Copic coloring but when it's a large image you got to kind of work a little harder to soak in you know the Copic coloring to get that the blend going you know so I used warm grays for him and again I've sped this up I'm not doing anything groundbreaking with the coloring <laughs> so I've super sped this up but I used the warm grays, I did all the coloring, and then I went in with my darkest, the W7, and added a bunch of dots, and I also darkened his little hands and feet with that too. Um, the dots to give him a little more texture, you know, just some more visual interest, and I did the same with the W5, that just adds lighter ones, and again, just a little bit of texture. And then I had used uh, B32 and 34 for the net. And then I used a couple of cool grays for the handle. So went around with that. Once I've got those little two cool grays blended out, I used some very pale yellows like Y04, Y00, and triple zero, I think. Um, yeah, to quickly blend the stars. And then I took my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pin and painted all those stars. So they're gonna be extra sparkly. Again, I sound like a broken record, but really, go big or go home. <laughs> it's like, I started out slow this month, you know, I was keeping things a little simpler, a little clean and simple. And then people are like, what is happening? Like, where's the splatter and the bling? And I'm like, oh, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, you guys don't tempt me, you know? It's not like I need the encouragement. I'm going to do it anyway. But anywho, so I got this, the shimmer splatter, all the sparkle and the stars. I'm going to add more in a bit anyway. Um, I took my white gel pen and I just added highlights just to the mouse. One, because I think I forgot to do the net, but 
he he deserved the attention. You know, I added little dots to the texture as well, added a few little highlights just because. And then once I was done with that, I die cut Simon's, uh, one of their holographic. Oh, like, look at that. The rainbows it picks up when, you know, the light hits it. Anyway, <laughs> I die cut that specific holographic cardstock and some white cardstock with the shoot for the stars wafer die set I just thought that would work and the, the size of it was perfect for this ever you know it's just one of, I was like this is just meant to be so I stacked the layers together with craft tacky glue so I've got two layers of the white cardstock and then I'm going to top it with that holographic layer which again my camera like freaks out at this stuff it just you know doesn't want to focus but um adhered all of those together and then before I adhere that to the actual card front, I'm going to trim that card front down. Because like I said at the beginning, it's five by seven right now. My card itself is going to be five by seven and I wanted a nice like border around it. So I trimmed this, ended up trimming this down to like four and a half by six and a half. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because I think I took it like basically a quarter inch off every um, side. So trim that down a bit. And then I adhered um, that die cut sentiment again with craft tacky glue. So once I've got that in place, I carefully set it on there. I didn't want it to smear or like mess up my background. So I've got that adhered into place. And then my card base, I just took a piece of Simon's white cardstock and I trimmed it down with my, my big daddy trimmer. I trimmed this down to 10 inches by seven inches. And then I'm going to score this at five inches. So that'll make my five by seven um, card base. So Teflon bone folder, my little score buddy. I always have to rotate it because it's not big enough to hold this entire um, length of cardstock. And then reinforce that score with my Teflon bone folder. And then I'm going to fold the card inside out so I can stick it back in my Misty. And then I'm going to stamp that little critter again with the morning ink so the lightest blue ink that I'd use for the blending just you know just because so it looks all super cute on the inside as well so I'm going to stamp him with that once that's stamped I'm going to line up one of the sentiments from that catch a star set get that lined up and then I'm going to stamp that with the intense black ink so I'm going to ink that up and stamp that a couple times I think I need to get I think I just need to refill this ink pad. <laughs> I've used this a lot and I've actually had this one for I don't even know how many years now. But anyway, stamp the inside. And then to adhere the card front to the card base, I used Simon's Big Mama foam tape. So it gives it that little bit of dimension that I loved without adding like a ton of bulk. And then like I said earlier, I was going to add more bling, which of course. So I've got my Trinity stamps. Uh, oh, my stars. Uh, embellishments as well as the starlight ones. The starlight ones are like the one, two, three, four, five, eight pointed stars. They're the biggest ones that just recently came out and I did a release and review video on Trinity's latest release. And then yeah, sprinkled those heavily throughout this card. Little dabs of glue, picked them up with my jewel picker and then stuck them into place. Love. <laughs> So I've got like holographic cardstock, holographic star confetti, glitter, shimmer splatter, all of the things. Loads of fun to make this. And like I said earlier in the video, this stamp set is limited edition. There are a ton, and I'll have a link to Colorado Craft Company in my blog post. Um, there are a ton of sets with these critters because that is what they've become very much known for in the last couple years. And they're fabulous. So... There's tons of options, lots to choose from, but this one is limited edition. Last year it sold out unbelievably quickly. I know they've stocked up more this year, so we'll see. I'm not taking bets because I've lost all of my potential, like, you know, predictions. So, yeah. All the links will be in the description box below the video. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs up and commenting. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.